Picture this. You're at the beach. You dig your toes into the warm, golden sand. You scoop some of it up, let it run through your fingers. It's just sand. Nothing special, right? Now what if I told you that this simple, grainy stuff is one of the most important resources in human civilization? And even crazier, we're running out of it. Turns out, sand isn't just for beaches and for sandboxes. It's everywhere. In the buildings we live in, the roads we drive on, the glass in our windows, and even the phones we spend way too much time staring at. And we're using it up at a terrifying rate. Hold up, let's back up for a second. How did we get here? How did something as simple as sand become so critical to modern life? In today's episode, we're gonna be diving into how we're running out of sand, why it matters, and what it means for our future. All of society is basically built on sand. Literally everywhere, we're driving on it, we're sitting in it, we're looking through it. It's absolutely extraordinary. Actually, in some places, the world is running out. I'm really starting to be concerned about what happens if we don't have this anymore. When I first heard about this, I almost couldn't believe it. Growing up in California, sand was everywhere. So the thought never really crossed my mind that something so abundant could be a scarce resource. So I did some digging. Well, not literally, but what I found was incredible, and we're gonna be diving into all of it today. To fully understand what's happening here, we need to first get a better understanding of sand and why it's so important. For starters, sand isn't just tiny rocks. It's the result of millions of years of erosion. Mountains crumble, rivers grind down stones, waves smooth out pebbles. The process is slow, like watching paint dry on a humid day. But over time, this grinding produces the perfect building blocks for civilization. Angular, rough sand grains that can bind together to form concrete. And concrete, that's the foundation for everything. The Romans figured this out over 2,000 years ago when they invented Roman concrete, which, by the way, was so good that some of the buildings are still standing today, unlike some of the highway potholes that we still need to deal with every other week. Fast forward to today, and we use 50 billion tons of sand every year, enough to cover the entire state of California in a foot of sand every single year. Most of that goes into construction. Every skyscraper, bridge, and sidewalk relies on sand-based concrete. Then there's glass. Windows, mirrors, and even the lenses in your sunglasses all start as sand. Asphalt? That's sand too. And let's not forget technology. Silicon chips, fiber optic cables, and even your smartphone screen all rely on highly refined sand. Basically, without sand, modern life collapses. So what's the problem? There's plenty of sand, right? I mean, we have entire deserts full of this stuff. Look at the Sahara, it's huge. Well, funny story. Desert sand is useless for construction. You think all sand is the same. I mean, that's what I thought, honestly. But no, desert sand is too smooth and round because it's been blown around by the wind for thousands of years. And when sand grains are too smooth, they can't stick together properly. Kind of like trying to build a sandcastle out of marbles. The sand we need, it comes from rivers, lakes, and coastal areas. Places where water erosion naturally produces rough, jagged grains that can bond together. And that's exactly the kind of sand that we're running out of. And here's where things get really serious. As the demand for sand skyrockets, we're stripping riverbeds, dredging coastlines, and wiping out entire ecosystems to keep up. Rivers are drying up because we scooped out too much sand. Coastal communities are seeing their beaches literally disappear as sand is mined away. In some parts of the world, sand mining is so aggressive that entire islands have vanished. Just gone. Like they're never there. And because sand is so valuable, a black market has even formed around it. Yeah, there's a sand mafia. That might sound like something out of a bad action movie, but I swear, it's real. In places like India, Cambodia, and Kenya, organized crime groups have taken control of the sand trade illegally mining it and selling it for massive profits. People who try to expose them, journalists, environmental activists, and even government officials have been murdered for speaking out. Think about that for a second. There's actual gangsters out there fighting over sand. It's one of the most valuable in-demand resources on the planet. And yet, almost no one is talking about it. China, 
the world's biggest consumer of sand, used more cement between 2011 and 2013 than the US did in the entire 20th century. Dubai, a city literally surrounded by desert, ran out of usable sand and had to start importing it from Australia. That's like living in the rainforest and having to import water. And the consequences? They're already here. If we don't change course, this is what we're looking at. Construction costs will skyrocket. No sand means no concrete. No concrete means no new buildings, no new roads, no new infrastructure. Housing prices? They'll go up. Fast. Technology shortages. If we can't get enough high purity sand, microchip production slows down. That means fewer computers, fewer smartphones, fewer AI-powered gadgets to ask ridiculous questions to. Environmental disasters. Coastal erosion will accelerate. Beaches will disappear. River ecosystems will collapse. Some islands and low-lying cities could disappear much sooner than expected. More crime. If the sand mafia is already killing people over sand, imagine what happens when the resource gets even scarcer. The black market will explode. In short, we're looking at a world where sand is more valuable than oil, and the things we take for granted, buildings, roads, phones, and even entire coastlines, start vanishing. So what do we do? What if we keep going on like this, burning through sand like it's an infinite resource? Well, for starters, the cost of construction will skyrocket. That's bad news if you're a fan of things like affordable housing, new infrastructure, or literally any kind of development. No sand means no concrete, and no concrete means cities grind to a halt. We might see a shift towards alternative building materials like wood, but let's be honest, deforestation is already a problem, and I don't think replacing a sand crisis with a tree crisis is the best plan. And then there's the tech industry. If we don't figure out a way to replace silicon in microchips, we could be looking at a major supply chain issue. Remember the global chip shortage a few years ago? Imagine that but permanent. No new phones. No new gaming consoles. No new anything that relies on computer chips, which is everything. And let's not forget about the environmental fallout. The more we scrape sand from riverbeds, the more we disrupt entire ecosystems. The more we take from beaches, the more we make coastal cities vulnerable to erosion. We can see places like Miami, Venice, or the Maldives vanish much sooner than expected not just because of rising sea levels, but because we literally moved the thing protecting them from the ocean in the first place. But here's the thing, humanity is pretty good at pulling itself back from the brink. I mean, we've almost nuked ourselves off the planet a couple times, and we're still here. So what could the future look like if we actually take this problem more seriously? Thankfully, there's some good news. Scientists are already working on some solutions. For one, researchers are experimenting with recycled glass as a replacement for construction sand. Think about that. Our empty beer bottles, soda cans, and shattered iPhones could be turned into the next generation of skyscrapers. We'd literally be walking on our old text message failures. Then there's the idea of engineering desert sand to make it usable in concrete. Right now, desert sand isn't too smooth, but researchers are looking into ways to artificially roughen it up. If they crack that code, suddenly we go from a sand crisis to an infinite supply because, well, deserts. 3D printing could be another game changer. Some companies are already working on 3D printed buildings using way less material than traditional construction. Imagine a feature where skyscrapers are printed layer by layer like a giant Lego set, dramatically cutting down our need for sand. And then there's the world of biomaterials. Scientists are trying to develop sustainable alternatives to concrete using bacteria, fungi, and even living organisms that can grow building materials. We might end up in a future where buildings are alive, breathing, self-repairing structures that can grow like coral reefs instead of crumbling over time. And of course, there's space. Because if we're running out of sand on Earth, there's a whole lot of it on the Moon and Mars. Lunar and Martian regolith, aka space dust, could one day be used to build colonies off-world, meaning that in a bizarre twist, our sand crisis might actually help push us into becoming an interplanetary species. Think about that for a second. Humanity might actually leave Earth because we ran out of sand. 
The foundation of modern civilization. The stuff in your kid's sandbox. That might be what forces us to spread ourselves across the solar system. So what's next? The way I see it is that we have two options. We could keep going the way we're going and start seeing the effects. Higher prices, environmental destruction, tech shortages, and disappearing coastlines. Or we start investing in other alternatives and we start innovating ourselves out of this mess. And honestly, I think we will. Because if there's one thing history has proven, it's that when we hit a brick wall, we either find a way to go around it or we create a whole new type of wall. But the question is, will we do it in time? Let me know what you think. Will we solve the sand crisis? Or are we headed towards a future where sand is more valuable than gold? Drop a comment, hit that subscribe button, and stick around. Because it's important for us to keep this conversation going about where we're headed.